everybody and welcome to the She Myth Eliminator story. Today I have got another amazing guest for you. The story that, I mean, I get an opportunity to speak to all of these women behind the scenes before we even start to go live and it just blows me away every time I start chatting with them and they start telling me about their backstory, where they've come from, what they're doing and the amazing things that they have done to be successful in their lives. Uh, you know, today and the woman that they are today. So I want to welcome to today's story, Lana McNa Makara. I'm going to get that right, Lana Makara. And uh, I've just had that chat with Lara and she has, there's so many things that she has done that have been amazing to get her to the point that she's at today. So I want to make sure that we get across all of the points because there's so many great things in the story that she's literally told me in about five minutes. We've got about 20 minutes today. We're going to go through um, all of these things. We're going to have a look at, you know, what it were some of the points in her life where she was like, oh my gosh, you know, I've realized that I've been she -miffed and she made a radical change to really change the trajectory of her life and what has got her to being the successful, I'm going to say multi-award winning author that she actually is today. So welcome on board, Lana. It's so wonderful to have you here all the way from Philadelphia. Thank you, Tracy. My pleasure. <laughs> it's so it's awesome to have you here. Now, I want to I want to kind of go back a little bit. I want you to tell us um, a bit of your backstory, uh, the conversation that you and I had backstage as to you know what had happened in the past and how you've come to be where you are uh, doing amazing things right now. I started out uh, as a pastor's wife. And I, I have seven children. I didn't drop that bomb on you while we were backstage. Um, so I, I was a pastor's wife with seven children. I thought I was locked in. I thought my life was going to be just like that. Stay at home mom. I had no game plan for being on my own, for earning a living, for being in the workforce. I didn't think it applied to me. Um, and so I had nothing, basically. <laughs> now, that that is not to say that I didn't have any skills. I did. But as far as up to age 52, and I just want to emphasize that, you know, because a lot of women say, I'm too old to start over. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're 70. You're not too old. You know, as long as you're healthy, go for it. So um, that was my background, really. No game plan. And I landed on the sidewalk at age 52 with no resume or job history for 30 years. Wow. However, you know, it's interesting that you, you say that and you said, I didn't think I had, you know, a lot of skill, but the story goes on, right? There's like, yeah. oh, but then there was this moment. So tell us about that. Yes. Well, back in the early days of my marriage, I was so bored with all these little kids. I had no, you know, no stimulation in the brain. It was all diapers and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so I started writing. I took a writer's course, a correspondence course. I started writing. I started teaching myself about how to write. I wrote for 14 years without ever getting published. Finally got published in 96, 1996. And in 2000, I won a national award for my fiction. So I was doing this on the side along with raising the kids. Well, what happens when you have a book? You begin to market. You've got to get out there. You've got to get on social media. You've got to speak. You've got to be interviewed. And and the book that won the award, I was on TV. I was all over the radio. There was a publishing, I mean, a, a PR, public relations company that was representing me. And I was everywhere uh, for that book. And so in the middle of all that, I'm just a stay-at-home mom conversation I was having in my head. I was still doing other things. But I didn't really think it mattered because it wasn't a W-2. It wasn't a paycheck. I got checks in the mail, but they, you know, they were irregular. One book might be doing fabulous and the next book tanked. You know, you just don't know what you're going to get. You can't live on that kind of income. And so I did not count my biggest asset. And I actually didn't count my biggest asset for several years after I actually left the marriage. Oh, wow. It was like money in the bank and I was just leaving it lay there. Uh-huh. Yeah. So why do you think that were the case? Like what what back then made you discount all of the skills and the knowledge that you actually had? Because you were being 
you know, they you say, I was just in an operative work, I was just a, a stay-at-home mum, mm-hmm. but yet you were actually doing all these amazing things, but you didn't recognise those at that time as being being worthy or being having a skill set that was actually worth something to somebody else. Yeah. So what I did was I got I got out, you know, I went to family and I kind of took a few months to pull myself together, started looking at the job market, you know, what am I going to do? Sit stand behind a cash register at the dollar store? You know, that was what I had because I had no no resume, right? And and nine dollars an hour, you know, I couldn't even rent a small, tiny, nothing type of place for that. And so that's when I realized that I was not going to be able to go into the job market. I had to become an entrepreneur if I was going to make it. So what I did was I literally sat down and I listed everything that I had done in my book world. And I realized that the most saleable thing in my mind at the time, it wasn't writing, it was marketing because I had been massively marketing. Now my books had sold half a million copies when I left the marriage. Now I'm going on to approach a million at this point, but I was a pretty good marketer. I sold mm-hmm. a lot of books. And so I thought, you know, I could market my marketing skills. And so I became a virtual assistant who offered marketing services. So now instead of $9 an hour, I was charging $25, $30 an hour. We know the whole thing. Why would you work for 10 bucks when you yeah. can work for 50 bucks, right? Uh And the thing is, if you have these skills and you aren't counting them, you're leaving cash in the trash, really. Um, And so that's how I started. I started to become a virtual assistant and um, I'm very organized. You know, I had seven kids, got all them going. I really had that skill down, although I did not have a project management certificate, you know. So eventually I did uh, get a job in corporate as a webinar marketing manager. And that was a turning point for me because I got into corporate and I thought when I landed that corporate job, I thought, okay, now I've got it made. I've got benefits. Uh, At that point I was making $28 an hour, which now I look back at it and think, what was I thinking to accept a job for that much money? Um, It was just enough barely to live on, but it was better than what I, you know, had, thought of for the dollar store because I thought I saw consistency in it, you know, a regular paycheck. And when I got into that corporate setting, I was astounded. My, my supervisor who was the vice president of marketing, she came to me and she said, you know more about internet marketing than anyone in the building. And so we're going to have a meeting and we're going to ask you some questions about the direction that we're taking with the company and with the project that you're on. And I went, what? Okay. Mm-hmm. And I mean, my heart started pounding. And mm-hmm. that was a moment when I realized I wasn't just a stay at home mom. I had been learning. I had been honing my skills. I had become competent in something that was valuable to people. And so that was a big shift for me. Now, I only lasted five months in that company. I could not tolerate corporate. After being my own boss, you know, for all these years, I'm not just talking about these few years, but all my life I've been my own boss. Um, I couldn't stand somebody breathing down my neck that did not know half of what I did about the topic. And yet they're breathing down my neck. I couldn't take it. Uh, So I left there and I got another job, uh, J-O-B, selling hot tubs. And it was just like the next closest thing. Uh, One of my contacts connected with me, said, this person's looking for a salesperson and he needs a marketing person. I said, okay, well, I went in and applied for a marketing job. And he said, if you're going to work in this company, you have to be able to sell hot tubs because everybody in the showroom can sell a hot tub. If somebody walks in the door and you happen to be the only one here, you have to know how to do it. I was like, oh, sales. Ugh. You know, that was my sticking point. And really it was hard for me to make sales for myself when I was doing the VA work because I stuck at sales. But you know what I found out? I love sales. 
when I got mm -hmm. into the real sales training, there was another skill because I'm a people person, you know, people would come in yeah. and be like, oh yeah, you know, hot tubs are cool. They're really fun. And I, I became the top seller in my region that, that first year within nine months. And I went to California for special training because my regional director chose me to go for the region. Now that to say, don't discount yourself. <laughs> Stop the talk. <laughs> I absolutely love the story because it's it's a story that is you know it's echoed by so many women. They you know they think I'm just a stay at home mum, and they discount the fact that the organisation skills that they have, the communication skills. I mean, sales skills. Even with your children, you're doing that each and every day. So all of these things that we do as women, as mothers we often don't always see the correlation between that and it being a valuable and sought after skill set. And, you know, it, it, thankfully, it, you came to a point where you were like, actually, it, you know, I love the fact that you sort of went, hang on a minute, I'm going to take stock of what it is, what skills do I actually have? And it could have been quite easy for you to have gone, well, you know, maybe the only skill I've got is being able to write a book. Maybe that's where I should go. But you didn't do that. You were like, well, what other skill sets, what other skills do I have? And then by slowly working your way through that and realizing, making that connection to that, well, I could go and get a J-O-B, just over broke, or I could go and get, you know, I can actually take the skills that I've got, mm -hmm. use the marketing that skills that I've learned to actually just get myself out there and turn that into a paying, a well-paying career and business that actually provides you with the opportunity to have a you know beautiful home and a beautiful life. Yes, yes. And so this was like a process for me because marketing wasn't my like my passion. I actually I like it because, you know, it's a challenge, but I don't love it. You know, it doesn't light me up. Oh, boy, I'm going to do some marketing. You know, that's not how I felt. Um, but at the same time, I was kind of stymied because I was emotionally wrecked from the divorce and, I, and writing was very hard for me in that space. The focus it takes and all of that, I really had some personal development growth to do. I had to learn who I was and get myself grounded. That looking back now, the reason I didn't go back in the writing world is because I needed healing inside of me had a lot of dysfunctional stuff going on that, you know, from the marriage and so forth. So what happened with the hot tub store, which is kind of interesting too, because I was making so much money on commission because I was selling a lot of hot tubs and I was making a base rate, which was the marketing part because I was managing the website, writing blogs, doing all these campaigns, holding events in the store, all this marketing stuff. So I had a base rate for that. And then I commissioned on hot tubs. And my boss came to me and he said, I'm taking away your base rate. And I went, why? She said, because you're making too much money. If I let you go, you're going to make $40,000 this year. And I just, I, I was dumbfounded. I, I couldn't even speak. I'm like, $40,000. You think that's a lot of money? What in the, you know, so anyway, I, done. You know, I hit that she wall again. And that night I wrote my resume of my resignation. I put it on his desk the next morning and I cleaned out my desk. I was done with this game plan. I was finished. Okay. And so what I did was, and this is really key. I started telling people I'm a ghostwriter. Yeah. When people, cause I was going to networking, you know, uh, networking meetings because now I'm back to freelancing, right? To just stand up and own my passion. Because in my mind, I was thinking who would hire me for X number of thousands of dollars for a project when they don't even know me. That's too much money to ask somebody without having any kind of, previous relationship with them. And so I was talking myself out of the thing I do best. And when I came to the point where I was willing to own it, 
call it out, stand in my power. When I did that, three months later, I had my first ghostwriting client. And I went full time as a ghostwriter in 2015. And I've been supporting myself doing that, plus book coaching and editing and some other things ever since. And every year is better and better for me. And I have my time to my own discretion. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to take a day off, I take a day off. My clients don't care because it's a long term project. We get it done on time. If I want to work 15 hours one day and nothing for two days, they don't care. <laughs> so as long as the result, you know, that's you right. Result, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, yep. that is fantastic. I love everything that you've spoken about in terms of like, you know, going back to being the mom, if you know, when you say I was just a mom, then realizing actually, no, I wasn't just a mom. There was a whole lot of other things that I had, you know, built up and added to my to my toolkit, then recognizing what all of those were, then making some changes, then standing, then saying, okay, hang on a minute, as you walk, you know, went down through all these different journeys and nooks and crannies, and then going, hold on, there's a few points here that we've got to that hmm, this is just not not where I want to go. Standing firm with what uh, what you believe in and making an immediate change, actually taking action. And the other thing that I loved is that you went, do you know what? The, the thing that I recognized I had to do was a lot of like inner, inner work before I could actually move forward. So work on yourself first, then move forward, and then just slowly but surely started to, to mold your life by design yes. to exactly how you wanted it to be. Yes, absolutely. That was the beauty of it. Because when I first realized that I had to earn a living, all I could think about was nine to five grind, rolling out, exhausted, working for somebody else all day, coming home, throwing something on the table for dinner and doing it all again the next day. To me, that was really a definition of pure misery. And I did not want that for my life. And so over time, I was able to mold my life to my own specifications. Not that I don't work long hours, but I, I love what I do. I love it. And when I need a break, I take a break. You know, yeah. it's awesome. I mean, that yeah. is the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? Yes. Is that we become the, the, uh, the, we're at the helm. We drive our own, the sailor of our own ship. We don't have to go wherever somebody else is going to take us. And like you say, you know, we're building our own dreams, not building somebody else's. Yes. So I love everything that you've spoken about today. <clears throat> and given, you know, over this time, the number of books that you have written, the accolades that you've got for just, you know, staying true to who you are and sticking to, you know, even though there's been some pivots and some, some molding along the way, you've very much stayed true to who you are and stayed in your lane. And you've continued to move that forward. And you've just gained, you know, momentum on momentum on momentum to get you to the point that you're at today. So I think that's a fabulous, um, you know, ex explanation of your journey and how other women can follow that exact same pathway to start creating the life that they actually want that's not dictated by somebody else. So thank you very much for sharing everything that you've <laughs> spoken about today. But I do know that we're going to have some people saying, oh, I wonder where I can you know, get more of La Lana. Where can I go to have you know, a, a further conversation with her? What's the best place that people can actually connect with you, Lana? Go to my website, lanamakira.com. And uh, you can connect with me there. Sign up for that free phone call. Let's just connect and get to know each other. I would love yeah, it. Well, guys, if you've got a book inside of you, obviously Lana is, um, you know, being a ghostwriter. She's available now to be able to take on. I know she's only got room for, I think it's only one more client this year. So yeah. if you want to work with Lana, you best be real quick because uh, otherwise you are going to, you know, but they say when you're last, yes, it's not going to happen. You know, you're not fast, you're last. So get in there and make sure that you connect with her really quickly. Uh, the other thing that I want to ask you, Lana, before we sort of wrap up today's conversation, if there was a piece of advice that you had to give or you wanted to give or a message that you want to give to other women out there, what would it be? The, the most valuable thing that you have to offer the world is the easiest thing that you do. 
the thing that just comes out of you naturally. Some people just love holding parties. Some people just love talking on the phone. Some people just love decorating their house. Those things that make you feel so joyful without very little effort, just, it just happens. That's what you need to focus on. Doesn't have to be that hard. <laughs> No, it doesn't. You, that is a fantastic piece of advice. And, you know, when you can do it, when you can start building your business and making your living around the thing that you are super passionate about, it doesn't feel like work anymore. Yeah. It's just, you know, you, you it's a joy, like you say, it's a pure joy to be able to just get on mm -hmm. and, and do what you do, because it's fun. Yes. So there you go, guys, you've heard from Lana. Follow her advice. It is fantastic, the journey that she's had and the things that she has done to get her to this point. Even if you are a stay-at-home mum right now and you are thinking to yourself, oh, my God, I don't know, what the heck am I going to do? You know, I need to go and get me a J-O-B. That's not the only way. That's not the only option you have. You have a multitude of skills that you can turn into a business for yourself. So, you know, go ahead and do that. Find somebody that can help you. If you need to reach out to me, reach out to me. That's what we specialize in. In my agency, we actually help people take their skill set, take their knowledge and their uh, what they're passionate about and actually turn it into a profitable business. So that being said, I'm going to wrap up today. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for being here, Lana, and sharing your amazing story. And I'm wishing you all the best with everything else that you're doing. I will be following your journey very, very closely. And I hope that you'll be back again on another show that I run uh, at some stage soon. And we can kind of delve a little bit deeper into, I've got so many questions for you in terms of marketing and, and a few other things that I know will be very, very valuable to our listeners. So thank you for being here. Thanks, everybody else. If you have not got a copy of the Shemith book, then I would highly recommend, of course I recommend it because I wrote it along with Vicki Helm, but there it is. It's right underneath me. Go to amazon.com or amazon.com.au and get yourself a copy. Paperback, hardback, and also the uh, ebook version are all available so that you can consume it on whatever platform is best for you. But I'm going to say thank you very much for joining us. Bye for now. I'll be back again tomorrow morning with another amazing woman who is going to be sharing her She Myth Eliminator story. Bye for now. Thanks, Lana. <laughs>